Hey, good afternoon, boys and girls. This is Dougie Fresh in the house. It's really kind of odd calling myself Dougie Fresh, let alone saying the words in the house. But I'm here, and I'm going to attempt to do the impossible. I'm going to try to bring back to life an image that sucks. I uh, took it horribly wrong. It was a badly lit image. You'll see it in just a few minutes. Uh, but we are in CS6, and I'm going to ask that if you'd like, if you have CS6, you can follow me around. If you don't have CS6, I'm pretty sure that you can download at least a 30-day trial from Adobe.com uh, and uh, and play with it. Uh, it's it's a wonderfully wonderfully cool software, and it's really my primary software. I know a lot of folks like Lightroom. Uh, I use the majority of CS6 stuff. So, with that being said, I'm going to bring in uh, a a picture of an absolutely stunning young lady. Her name is Megan. She's one of my my favorite young ladies to shoot. She's gorgeous, but on this particular day, I did not serve her well. I lit it horribly. I posed her badly, um, and just did it all wrong. Uh, the elbow shouldn't be pointing at me. The skin tones are off. You can't even see your eyes because they aren't lit. Uh, even though I did have some rim lighting there, I think it was probably the at least a stop lower than it needed to be. But we're going to try to bring this particular image back to life. So don't eat me up on the posing and the lighting and all of that. She is absolutely stunning and I let her down. So let's see if we can at least clean it up a little bit to where it, it, it borderline acceptable. Uh, when I bring an image into Photoshop CS6 or, or whatever, I, I'm going to go automatically. This is how I do it. And you're going to find out that a lot of photographers uh, and graphics folks will do it their own way. Uh, they may even bypass steps that I'm taking. There are so many ways in Photoshop to do things. So don't take my way as gospel. This is just how I do it. Uh, first thing I do is image. I go into my adjustments and go down to levels. And the box will pop up right here, which will include my horribly, horribly managed histogram. You can see this. And if you're a photographer, you will know right away that this is a bad, bad histogram. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to, at least what I do is I hit automatic right away just to kind of see what it does. And you can kind of see where it went. It lightened it up just a little bit. Um, then I'm going to take my sliders and make sure that they are on both ends of the histogram. The right and the left should touch the very edges of that histogram as it goes. Now the, the one in the center is for mid-tones and highlights. Uh, we can slide, If I slide it all the way to the left, you see what happens. It kind of blows it out. If you slide it all the way to the left, it gets dark. So we're going to try to just try to find a comfortable setting here. Uh, and this is probably good enough for me even though I'm still a little blown out right here on the elbows and some of the chest area we're gonna stay here mainly because I'm really more concerned about her face and we're gonna click OK now that that's brought out and we've done our levels at least to my my liking we're gonna go in and we're gonna adjust there well there's a few things to do I may in on this particular image I may adjust the shadow highlights and when, by adjusting and hitting the adjustments and going down to shadow highlights it does bring out more of the background and you can take the slider and slide it back and forth and all of that uh, this is at zero if I bring it up just a tad it brings a little bit more out so I'm gonna go with that I'm gonna leave it to uh, anything that I said here isn't necessarily gospel you have to decide for yourself whether or not it works uh, none of all of your images and all of our images are gonna look different and they're not gonna have the same histogram and the numbers aren't gonna be the same so I'm just showing you where the sliders are that, so that you can adjust them. Um, now that we brought the image back to life a little bit, there are some concerns that I have. One of them is the fact that we, and we neither one of us knew this, but she has a slight tear in her dress right here. Um, so we're going to go in and we're going to clean that up for her. And you can do the same thing with bumps on the skin. Uh, what I like to do, there, there are a few things that you can use. The healing brush, uh, the clone tool. I'm going to use the healing brush because it's a little bit more forgiving, especially, especially on folds and on skin layers and levels that have, have creases and things in them. So I'm going to use this. And once you hit the, the healing brush, you'll notice that there is a menu box here that adjusts the size of your brush. And if I slide it all the way to the right, the brush gets bigger. Slide it all the way to the left, the brush gets smaller. I want to make it just about the right size to cover all of this because it's actually a scene that was torn a little bit and I don't even think she knew that until after the fact. So I'm gonna make it big enough so that we can do this. Now this is gonna be a sloppy attempt but that's about the right size of my tool so this is gonna be an extremely sloppy attempt at, at cleaning this up but you can get a little bit more 
specific with it and make sure that you do a better job. Once you've gotten the size of your your tool for your uh, um, your healing brush to correct correctly, then what you want to do is at least what I want to do is click somewhere nearby or just put your cursor somewhere nearby the area that you're cloning so that the, the, the values will match closer. Hit your Alt button. Once you hit your Alt button and you're holding it down, then right click like you or just click left, I'm sorry, like you normally would. And that just kind of evaluates this area so that if you move your cursor, no matter where you go with your cursor, you're picking up this value. Now, now I'm going to go to my area that I'm trying to fix, which is all the way through here. And I'm going to take my cursor and put it over there. And I'm going to hold my cursor down and just kind of move it down the line. Now you see that crazy fuzzy line that just appeared? It should disappear here shortly. I'm just going to let go of it. See, it, once the computer kind of decides what the value is, it kind of neutralizes it, makes it uh, so that it blends in. I'm going to do the same thing here. This isn't a tear. This is just a little bit of a glare. So down here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on my Alt button again. It's going to change my cursor. And then click. And then just go over here and just kind of hold it down and cover that up. Now, again, we've gotten rid of the tear. We've gotten rid of uh, the... Uh, the little scene that was popping there. Um, but just to show you how you can use the same tool, the same uh, healing brush tool, and you can use the clone tool. The clone tool just copies. I just like the healing brush a little bit better. But we're going to go up here um, and it's still using that same value of, of what I had. I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller. That should work. And we're going to hold down the Alt button because what I'm going to try to do is get rid of this little bump right here. I'm going to hold on the Alt button. I, I'll zoom in just a little bit more, too, so you can kind of see what's going on here. All right, this is what I'm trying to get rid of. So I'm going to hold down my Alt button, click, and that brings me the value. I've got the value here. I'm just going to hold it over there and then click again, and it disappears. Same thing here. You can do that and clean up that skin. Um, not that she has any imperfections, because Lord knows she does not. Oh, to be 20 and 21 and 22 all over again, right? Um... But let's say that, that you want to do the same thing on the chest area. You want to get a little bump or something you want to clear up. Let's say you want to clear this up. Click click nearby. Click the Alt button. Click and then cover it up. It's just that simple. Just that simple. Now, that looks a lot better than we did than we had when we started, um, at least in my opinion. We've got the eyes cleared up. There are a few things that are done to it. Um, what I'm going to probably do, I'm going to go ahead and crop it. I'm going to show you how to crop. There's a crop toolbar right here. We'll click on that. And in CS6, this box pops up. And then you have this this whole thing changes. And you've got a drop-down menu that allows you to go to preset uh, crop sizes. Um, four inches by six. You, you can actually put your own here. You can save presets. You can put in any specific crop you want. We're going to actually make this, uh, we're going to leave it at four by six, but we're going we're gonna to bring it in a little tighter. Um, what you're going to do is grab the corners and bring it in. I really want to concentrate more on her face. And I know I'm cropping stuff out. I can hear it already. You know, your elbows are out of it. I can't see. Uh, whatever. Well, you know what? If, you, if, if that bothers you, then maybe this is not your page, okay? That's all I'm saying. And once we get the, the photo positioned in there the way we want to, we're just going to double click. And now our image is cropped to where we want it. Um, with that being said, there's one more little thing that I'm going to do that really is a plug-in of Photoshop. It's just one of my favorite things to use, and that's called Portrait Professional. Uh, I use that a lot when it comes right down to doing any model shots, senior portraits, uh, even bridles, just to kind of clear up things that, uh, that they didn't even know that were an issue. Um, at least in Photoshop, I have it set up, and you can go... It won't show up in yours unless you buy it. Portrait Professional is a plug-in that you have to buy, but I'm going to show you how to go through it and show you what it does to the image. We're going to go to Filter um, and open up Portrait Professional and basically do some cleaning up to this beautiful young lady. Um, it opens up just like this. We're going to say that she is indeed a female. Now it's going to ask me to lay certain points out and it tells me over here where to lay them. So I'm going to lay this one at the corner of the eye. Now it tells me to lay at the other corner of the eye. Now on the center of the nose, and then the edge of the lip, and the other edge of the lip. Now, when it brings it in, it asks me to fix it. Uh, it just gives you a kind of generic thing. We're going to take these little edges, put them in the holes, right here, line up the eyes, get the iris straight. Da -da 
Uh, I'm going to do this kind of quickly, but if you have any questions about Portrait Professional, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, fix the eyebrow. That looks pretty close. I'm just I'm not going to do this very quickly. Hit the space bar. It brings me over here. We've got the other eye to worry about. Uh, bring in just a little bit. Fix that. Undo this. You, all I'm doing is clicking and moving things around. You can move these around with your with your cursor. And once you get them set, you can still move them around. And you kind of use this as a template over here to your right. All right. Hit me, hitting my space bar asks me if her mouth is open. Mouth's closed. Her mouth is indeed closed. So now we're going to take this and move this to the tips and basically form it around the mouth. Not a problem. Ah, the life of a photographer. All right, we're going to clean this up. Nothing too extreme. We want it to at least follow as closely as we can. Get the nose right. Okay, and then click the space bar again. Now, again, it's going to ask us to just basically clean up the jaw lines. We move these around so that they're on the edges. It kind of tells us where to put them right here. So that's everything is pretty much in order. And oddly, it, I think it kind of evaluates what the perfect symmetry of a face should be. And I guess Megan has got it because she's not far off. Uh, hitting the space bar again, it's going to render. And it's going to change this image uh, based on the values that we gave it um, and make some skin tone adjustments and clean it up basically a little bit. Um, it, now, if you look to the left, look to the right, you see what the image has done or what the computer has done with this image. Um, there are only a few other things that I like to do. One of them, believe it or not, is I'm going to enlarge her eye a little bit. I'm just going to widen her eyes. And if you go into face sculpt controls, eyes, widen them. We're going to widen them up just a little bit. See, I can make them huge, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to open them up a little bit. And then I know that this has already given her back her twinkle, but we're going to go in and actually lighten that up a little bit. We're going to bring this out so that her eyes stand out a little bit more, which is what I really, really like to do. And you go to eye control and brighten the iris and you'll see it. It'll just kind of pop a little bit. We're going to bring it out just a tad more. And that's it. And that's really all I'm going to do the image. Now the only other thing that I do is I change the skin. It, right now it's just evaluating the skin in, in the face area. We're going to go down to shoulder since she's wearing a lower neckline. Um, and just change the skin selection area to uh, low neckline and click OK. And essentially everything we did up here to clean up the skin is going to go to the chest area. Uh, now that we've done that and, and our two images are done, we, this is what we started with and this is what we're going to finish up with. We're going to go back to Photoshop and you hit File, Save and Return and it'll bring me back into Photoshop. Now this is the older version of Portrait Professional. This is not, this. I think this is version 10 on this computer. Version 11 is awesome. It actually will will go ahead and, and help you get the right skin tones and, and actually it'll find male and female right away. So with that being said, that's the improved image um, and I'm going to go ahead and save this so that I can show you at least what the improved image is and what the the original image looked like. And uh, Let's see, this was, da -da 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 -da. I've got to make sure I find the right image. And I know it was a full length, so I'm, I'm talking to myself at this point, folks, so just get over it. I've got to find an image over here on the right, which is what I'm looking for. Um, I want to say, I want to say that this is it. But what, what, what I'll do, I'll tell you what, what I'll do is I'll post a before and after image along with this video and you can see how it's done. Keep in mind Portrait Professional is a plug-in uh, but those are some of the very easy steps that I, I go through uh, when evaluating an image um, and, and deciding what I want to do with it and how I want to make it. Now there's still some issues. It's still a little blown out right here. It's a little little off on the skin tones. Uh, my monitor here is just not the best so when I look at images they may not necessarily look the same as what they do on yours. But with that being said uh, that is Dougie Fresh's first attempt at trying to teach anything, at least with Photoshop. If you have any questions, let me know. And if there's anything I can do to make your life easier, please, please let me know. Uh, I don't mind passing this particular software around. It's called Snagit so that others can give lessons. So if you think you want to give a lesson on something to our little Carolina Photography Club group, let me know. I would love for you to do it. Uh, just don't, don't eat me alive on this one. This is an attempt. Um, I already see folks like Colin and Mike Mulligan and, and uh, Shane and others coming out and just eating me up on this. So just know that, that, that I'm doing this just to help. Uh, if it doesn't work for you or, or someone else has got a better idea, please help me out. 